Let's get more now on that mass polio vaccination drive for Gaza. Sam Rose is Director of Planning at the UN Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees in the Near East. Very much welcome the, uh, these, these agreements that have been reached. And this is for humanitarian pauses, time-bound humanitarian pauses. We believe from about 6 in the morning till 2 o'clock in the afternoon for the duration of the campaign to be staggered across three different areas of Gaza. During these hours, no uh, military operations and no evacuation orders to be issued. I mean, Eve, with or without those, those orders, this is a complex operation that we're undertaking. Planning started weeks ago. Planning essentially has to be done and redone on, uh, on, a, on an almost daily basis, given these ever-changing parameters. But teams have been mobilized, and we, uh, certainly as UNRWA and the rest of the UN system that's involved in the concerned ministries, are ready to go as of Sunday morning. So you've got nine hours each day. Logistically, how will you get to the children who require these vaccines? We have a number of different types of, of teams and, and, and setups for this from the UNRWA perspective. We have uh, fixed mobile, we have fixed clinics, we have our health centres that are, that are operating. Some of these predate the war, others have been set up since, uh, since the war started. We have health points that we've set up inside the shelters where hundreds of thousands of people are, are sheltering. Then on top of that, we have mobile teams that will go around uh, the areas that have been declared as safe zones, visiting. It would have been house to house, but essentially now it's tent to tent. And then the fourth group are for teams that will go to those areas that are outside the declared safe zones. These safe humanitarian pauses that have been declared, they don't cover the entire area of Gaza. There are other parts, other areas that are outside of those zones. So special teams have been set up for, for, to, to, to deal and manage the population in, in, in those areas. Given the many other risks children in Gaza are facing, why have you had to prioritize get, getting the polio vaccine out to them? We've had to prioritize this given, uh, given the re-emergence of, of the disease. There is a global policy priority to eradicate polio. Polio had been largely eradicated from most of, 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 of the planet. Certainly, it had been eradicated from Gaza over 25 years ago. So the re-emergence of this disease is very, very damaging, very problematic, both for the children of, of Gaza, but for the children across the region, because it is mainly children that will contract the disease, because these are those who have not received the vaccines. The emergence and the contraction of the disease was a direct result of a child not being vaccinated mm -hmm. during uh, the war. It's absolutely critical that we get these, these, these vaccines out. They're not the answer for everything, sure. but they're a critical part of it. Children will have to travel to these fixed centres. How confident are you that in travelling to and from these centres they will be protected? Do they have to do that travelling within that nine-hour pause? Um, or is there some sort of leeway that these children won't be uh, vulnerable on their way to or from the clinics? I mean, typically most people attend health clinics in Gaza in the morning until about one or two o'clock in, the, the, in the, the afternoon. We uh, have received assurances from the party to the conflict that they will honor these, these pauses and we have, to, we have to go with that and that's what we're prepared for. If in the event the pauses don't, don't come to pass, and there's no reason to, 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 to think that they won't because the agreement has been reached, we will, we will have to reassess, but we'll take that decision on, on the day.